a wise Jedi Master once said, Always in motion is the future. And that absolutely applies to the new Star Wars content that is always in the works over at Lucasfilm. It's been a while since we jumped around and took the pulse of the upcoming Star Wars slate. Not since December 31st, 2023, in fact. And just look at that thumbnail. The Acolyte and the Bad Batch are long done, and Outlaws is just days away from release, at least as of writing, on August 30th. So, it's safe to say there's a lot of new projects and developments to talk about, especially after the recent D23 Expo, in which Lucasfilm debuted trailers, confirmed release dates, and teased more on the way. This is every single Star Wars project in development. The Mandalorian and Grogu. This won't be the next project to release, but it's definitely the big one right now, so it's only right to talk about it first. Star Wars hasn't released a movie in five years, not since The Rise of Skywalker concluded the sequel trilogy back in 2019, to what we'll call a mixed reception. Star Wars as a brand desperately needs a big hit on the silver screen, there's no denying that. Just think back to how hyped up the entire Star Wars fandom was when movies were actively releasing from 2015 to 2019. We need to get back to that. And there's no safer bet for Star Wars than The Mandalorian and Grogu, the stars of their most heavily pushed Disney Plus series. At D23 Expo, Jon Favreau, the creator of The Mandalorian and director of the movie, alongside Dave Filoni, an executive producer, confirmed that filming has begun on the feature and that they're proud and excited to be bringing Star Wars back to the big screen. Alongside the announcement of the movie already in the filming stage of production, Favreau and Filoni treated D23 attendees to a mini teaser trailer, which was not shared officially online. It has surfaced on places like Reddit and X, but Disney have actively been issuing copyright strikes and taking posts down, so unfortunately we won't be able to show the official footage. But we can talk about some of the highlights. The teaser started by showing moments of Din Djarin and Grogu from the first three seasons of The Mandalorian before cutting to the new stuff. Din Djarin walked into a room and fired his blaster at some Imperials. We saw what appears to be the Razor Crest fly by in space. That's right, Din's old ship that was blown up in Season 2. But we already knew it wasn't a one-of-a-kind vessel. We also saw Din and Grogu speaking with Zeb from Star Wars Rebels, back again in live action after showing up in The Mandalorian Season 3. We cut to an armory full of snowtroopers, making their return from The Empire Strikes Back. We then saw a snowy planet, possibly Hoth, as Din and Grogu raced down the middle of a mountain in an AT-RT walker. The duo came face to face with two AT-ATs, that began firing as the screen cut to black and a new The Mandalorian and Grogu logo appeared. One final shot after the title card was of Grogu inside a very small cockpit with two Anzellans, as they were seemingly piloting a mouse droid. And that's about it. Again, the movie is still being shot, so this is probably about all they were able to put together and really had to show. In a YouTube short, we previously covered set construction photos that were shared by Making Star Wars, indicating a return to the planet Navarro. It will be interesting to see how the movie may handle the passing of Carl Weathers, who played the planet's high magistrate, Grief Karga. May he rest in peace. The Mandalorian and Grogu is leading a slate of multiple upcoming Star Wars movies, with a release date of May 22nd, 2026. Man, I can't wait to be at the theater on opening night. After that, the movie from Sharmin Obeyed Chinoy seems next in line, which will see the return of Rey 15 years after the rise of Skywalker as she constructs a new Jedi Order. Dave Filoni is also working on another Mandoverse movie, which will be the big crossover event with characters from The Mandalorian, Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, and Skeleton Crew, likely with Grand Admiral Thrawn serving as the main villain but Filoni is currently focused on writing another Star Wars series that we'll touch on shortly. Also in development is a Dawn of the Jedi movie from Logan director James Mangold, which will be about the very first Jedi, thousands of years before any canon story. I can't wait to see where they'll take that one. Speaking of Logan, a movie is also being developed by Deadpool and Wolverine director Sean Levy. We have 
no idea what exactly it'll be about. Taika Waititi is apparently still working on his movie too, but updates have been few and far between. Finally, there's Rogue Squadron, which at one point was considered to be the next to release, even once penned to hit theaters in December 2023. By December 2022, however, Disney had pulled the title from its release schedule and put it on the back burner. However, in a March 2024 interview on the Talking Pictures podcast, director Patty Jenkins announced that she is once again working on the script for Rogue Squadron, following the dissolution of her planned Wonder Woman 3 at Warner Bros. and DC Studios. Lucasfilm have yet to confirm this, but at least it's something. The story will introduce a new generation of Starfighter pilots as they earn their wings and risk their lives in a boundary-pushing, high-speed thrill ride. The movie, if it happens, is supposed to be like a Star Wars version of Top Gun. It would honor books from author Michael A. Stackpole in the Star Wars X-Wing series, as well as the video games, while also bringing the story into a new age. Whether or not it will actually release remains to be seen. Skeleton Crew Now here's one we actually can show footage for, as the official trailer for Skeleton Crew was published online to the masses. The next live-action Star Wars series was also given a release date of December 3rd, 2024. The show was created by John Watts and Christopher Ford, who worked on the Tom Holland MCU Spider-Man trilogy. Skeleton Crew takes place during the Mandoverse era and follows a group of children who make a mysterious discovery on their home planet that leads them to get lost in a strange and dangerous galaxy as they look to find their way back home. It's said to be inspired by movies like The Goonies and E.T., very different from any live-action Star Wars we've seen so far. The trailer featured the children on their home planet, one of whom is an Ortolan, the same species as Max Rebo from the band at Jabba's Palace in Return of the Jedi. The kids seem to discover a ship and accidentally take off, going on to encounter some pirates, including Vane from The Mandalorian Season 3. The part that has everyone talking, however, is at the end. That's when Jula's character uses the Force, as one of the kids asks if he's a Jedi. In a recent interview with Rotten Tomatoes TV, Law explained who exactly he's playing. So I play uh, a character called Jod, well that's one of his names, and uh, he is someone they meet and who is there to sort of try and help them back to their home planet. And you never quite know whether he's trustworthy, whether he isn't trustworthy, whether he's with one side or another, you never quite know. But ultimately, he's a member of the crew. Some of them want him a part of it, some of them don't want him a part of it. I can't give too much away. <laughs> of course. But I don't want to, I, so, so yeah, he's, I'm gonna say he's, he's full of contradictions. And or season two. Another trailer shown exclusively to those in attendance at D23 was for Andor Season 2, which will release next year in 2025, likely the show to come out after Skeleton Crew. The trailer screened at D23 confirms that Ben Mendelsohn will reprise his role as director Orson Krennic as the series approaches the events of Rogue One. Every set of three episodes will cover a year in Cassie and Andor's life, 12 total episodes covering the four-year period between Andor Season 1 and the movie Rogue One. It's safe to assume Krennic will pop up at some point towards the latter half of the season as the Rebels get closer to learning about the Death Star. Another Rogue One character who will return is the reprogrammed KX security droid K2SO. We'll almost certainly find out how exactly Cassian got the droid and how they became so tight. There will be plenty of other returning rebels in Season 2, including Luthan Rail, Mon Mothma, and Saw Gerrera. Perhaps we will discover what led Saw and his partisans to have a rift with the rest of the Rebel Alliance, and why they were on Jedha in Rogue One. Andor Season 1 was by far the best written Star Wars of all time, so I can't wait to see what Tony Gilroy and the rest of the team have in store for us. Star Diego Luna recently told Entertainment Weekly that it will permanently change how we as viewers see Rogue One, saying, quote, I think people watching Rogue One after watching Season 2 are going to see a different film. Everything will be signified differently, knowing what had to happen for K2 to be there. It's going to make you witness the journey of Rogue One in a different way, I think. 
and not just with K2, but with many other characters. I think it'll be really cool. I don't know about you, but I'll be immediately following up the Andor Season 2 finale by re-watching the movie, Ahsoka Season 2. This is the series we teed up earlier, the one Dave Filoni is currently writing. Filming is probably a ways away. All we've been treated to so far is a single piece of concept art, probably drawn by Filoni himself. It shows Ahsoka Tano and Sabine Wren atop the pointing hand of a giant statue, and the story continues is written within the image. Ahsoka Season 1 viewers are already familiar with this giant finger, as this is where we last saw Balin Skull in the final minutes of the Ahsoka Season 1 finale. Those statues are of course the Mortis Gods, the father, son, and daughter who played a major role in an arc in Star Wars The Clone Wars. This points to something bigger being at play in this new galaxy and on the mysterious world of Peridia. While Ahsoka and Sabine remain stuck there, Grand Admiral Thrawn has returned to the known galaxy, as he has Ezra Bridger, who's reunited with Harris and Nula. Let us know your predictions for Ahsoka Season 2 in the comments. Lando. Alright, we lied, there's one more movie we need to talk about. Despite the Han Solo spin-off movie not performing well at the box office in 2018, I thought it was a really fun watch. And one of the standouts of Solo A Star Wars Story was undoubtedly Donald Glover's portrayal of Lando Calrissian. Disney clearly thought so too, and announced a Lando spin-off series back in 2020. Following years of silence on the project, we finally got a pretty big update earlier this year. It was confirmed that Donald himself and his brother Steven would take over the writing duties for Lando. While the actor had remained busy with other commitments, Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy maintained that there was a high level of interest in producing the project. Another change for Lando came by way of its format, which Lucasfilm shifted from a Disney Plus streaming series to a movie slated to release theatrically. Well, many thought Lando had died in production like other Star Wars projects such as Rangers of the New Republic, it seems that's not the case. Though it's likely Lando is at least a few years away from release. But that's about all we know for sure to be in active development. With the Bad Batch series now finished, rumors have been swirling about Lucasfilm working on a new animated project, fueled by some online job postings hiring for such work. However, nothing has been confirmed as of yet. On the video game side of things, the third Jedi game, the threequel to Fallen Order and Survivor, is in active development at EA, with Cameron Monaghan back as Cal Kestis. But again, we don't have any details as of yet. It's likely that Lucasfilm have a few big announcements in the chamber that they are saving until Star Wars Celebration in Japan come April. But We'll be sure to update you then, and do our annual dive into the full 2025 content slate a little closer to the new year. But let us know in the comments which upcoming Star Wars project you're most excited for, and I'll catch you in the next one. Come join us to chat more at our community Discord server linked in the description. If you enjoyed today's Star Wars video, we've got more on the screen for you right now. Also make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe to join the Red Squadron. Until next time, thanks for watching and may the force be with you. Red 5, standing by.